wow, this is a pretty good crowd for a Friday morning. <laughs> so three things. I'm going to tell you the bad news. I'm going to tell you what I think the opportunity is. And then I'm going to tell you that I believe that you all and the Linux Foundation is one of the great leverage points. I really believe we have this. There's a number that's missing here. Uh, does anybody know actually um, what 409.59 represents? Anybody? Back here, yeah? Uh, the yep, yesterday's number. So 409.59. That was yesterday's number. 350 is probably the number that we really want to be at. It's kind of the Goldilocks number. So what is 2050? 2050 is basically the point of no return that will pretty much um, ensure that the next uh, two or three, 4,000 years is uh, going to be living what it is that we're doing right now or not doing right now. So what's really interesting is that when people talk about their 2050 goals and 100% decarbonization, removing carbon, really fundamentally what they're talking about is that 94% of that carbon can re be removed uh, through transportation and power. So there's actually a finite group of people and a finite endeavor uh, that, you know, it, it, it's, it's bracketed. It, yes, it is everywhere and everything, but when you talk about power systems, those are the systems that have to be transformed. And then the remaining part really is around agriculture. And so what you eat is actually incredibly important in terms of uh, mitigating climate change. So this is, see if you can track me here. I, I, I haven't had a, a really good visual designer um, help me with this, but um, so in 2016, uh, we used about globally about 145,000 terawatts of energy. And of that, less than 5% were renewables. In 2050, we will be using 380,000 terawatts of energy. So the implication of that is that we are going to more than double our energy requirements between now and 2050. And so today's investment in tomorrow's reality is equal to about 2%. That's not good. <laughs> it, what that really means is that we are, have only solved about 2% of the problem of 2050. So we live in a time in which we have to have phenomenal technological innovation. And right now, we're not innovating at scale. So for me, about four or five years ago, I started thinking about what is the greatest example of scaling. And there are very few examples of hyperscaling on the planet, but there is one, and every single person in this room has actually, in one way or another, made their career related to it. This is actually a picture of the internet. And this is exactly what we have to do with energy. We need to leverage the same design principles, which are really what you all are doing all day, every day, in order to create what some people might refer to as the internet of energy. I don't know that it's the best metaphor, but I think that it is critical to understand what the scaling actually looks like. And the, at the foundation of that is collaboration and cooperation. So for me, you know, open source is an intellectual property agreement that enables collective action. And there is no problem that this pl planet has ever experienced that so deeply and intrinsically needs collaborative action. 
So I wanted to talk a little bit about what the grid uh, looks like. So, so I don't know whether you know sort of the history of, of electricity and the grid, but um, electricity and telecommunications really occurred. Um, the, you know, the telephone and, and the first sort of transmission line uh, occurred pretty much at exactly the same time. Uh, maybe there was like a 10 year difference between them. And I think that when we look at telecommunications, we have seen what happens when an industry is fundamentally transformed by digitalization. Well, when it comes to energy, we haven't yet done that. And so the reason why LF Energy exists and the reason why it exists in the Lennox Foundation is because this is much closer to what it is that we need to create. We have to network electrons. And there is not a power systems engineer on the planet that would tell you that you can actually network electrons. You can't. You can't do um, with a bit and you know, packets what you need to do with an electron. But what we can do is that we can network information about an electron. And in doing that, we have the ability to orchestrate it. These concepts are you know, at the future vision of you know, where power systems see themselves going. And there are unicorns all over the planet that recognize this is actually what we have to be able to do. We have to be able to utilize information and communication technologies to accelerate um, transformation. And I don't know whether you all know this, but probably you know, in the current paradigm, we maybe waste 60%, 70%, in some cases, 80% of electrons that are generated. So we have to build and create radical energy efficiency. And that kind of utilization of resources is also exactly what you people all know how to do. So what's the current state? Um, it's fragmented and disjointed across all parts. Um, the, the farther that you get, the closer, you know, more into the built environment, the more fragmented it is. Um, and, and I think for that reason, LF Energy really started with the transmission system operators because there are only 240 transmission system operators on the planet, or 260. And um, so it's much easier to actually organize transmission system operators and they're the ones who bring from generation, they're the ones that actually move energy at high voltage. And all of them recognize that the direction that we need to be able to go towards is um, interoperability, automation, and advanced orchestration. And if you recognize this graphic, this came from ARPIT, it came from LF networking. We have to essentially do with energy what telecommunications has done. <clears throat> So within LF Energy, um, this is kind of what our stack looks like today. Um, I, I, t I tell people that I, I feel a little bit like the Lucy character in, uh, in Charles Schultz that, uh, you know, I put up a sign and it said, you know, energy sector, come here. And so we started with a uh, few code bodies, um, mostly at the transmission system level. And what's happened is that slowly but surely, the, the code is beginning to come in. And there's a number of different ways that it's happened. Uh, one of them is through a very active end user group of utilities um, who are looking at what they need and recognizing the gap between uh, what exists in the marketplace and what it is that needs to be created. So one of the projects that we're starting right now is a digital substation project. And imagine, so the substation is the place where high voltage electricity gets stepped down into medium and low voltage. And the reason why it's important is that, uh, that the substation is essentially an edge node router. Uh, between the transmission and the control centers at the generation, the control, the distribution level, and that um, it becomes an edge node router out, you know, out, you know, to photovoltaics, to batteries, to networked uh, hot water heaters, to HVAC systems, and that those things become part of the orchestration capacity, the ability to shape loads. And so, you know, when you think about electricity, 
I think it's sometimes really helpful to think about water and you know, how you think about how water flows. Um, because in many ways, that's what we're doing. But electricity is an instantaneously perishable commodity. However, it is absolutely critical to everything that we do with regards to our economies. And so that's part of what is so problematic about um, the transformation and why it's so difficult. Uh, I refer to it often as a Gordian knot. So uh, what that means is that you know, we, we really have to defy the logic of it. And, and I believe that uh, the Lennox Foundation is one of the great leverage points on the planet for being able to accelerate collaboration and cooperation that leads towards transformation. These are our founding members. We just got a new member yesterday. I have about 20 that are coming in the pipeline. Mostly we've been focused in Europe. And I think that that's because the United States is um, <clears throat> having some problems. <laughs> you know, and som sometimes I get, I mean, I get mad about things like, you know, we'd like to buy Greenland. And I'm absolutely horrified and embarrassed by that. Um, but. The other part that I feel about it is that, you know, maybe we have, to, we have to be able to increase the capacity of the entire world. And, you know, one of the things that I say to people is that it is not good enough that California or New York or Massachusetts or Denmark or the Netherlands decarbonizes because we're talking about atmosphere. And so even if they're successful, it is not going to necessarily enable us to get to 2050 and 100% decarbonization. Another thing that I often talk about is um, the scale of innovation uh, that um, I recently was listening to somebody talk about the fact that uh, a gigabyte of storage in 1986 was $75,000. Today it's basically nothing, it's free. It's like, you know, you want to get something, you want to store it, you stash it, it's free. And that's the scale of innovation. And so that is what I want to say to all of you. Um, and, you know, um, I, I often share this picture. This is General Sherman. And if you've never uh, been to Sequoia uh, National Park, it's not that far from here. Um, General Sherman is the largest single stem living thing on the planet. And this is a seed from General Sherman. And the reason why I carry it with me and I share it with people is that, you know, I think um, we sometimes don't recognize uh, that the DNA of something has the capacity to actually transform the world. And I believe that LF Energy and the Lennox Foundation does have the capacity to do that. So I talk to people about this being a hero's journey. And um, what I mean by that, and, you know, and, and I'm, I, you know, I don't know altogether the age of the people who are sitting in the audience. Um, when I'm talking to power system engineers, and a lot of them are all close to retirement, um, you know, I kind of say, if you are not going to take a risk and actually um, facilitate and enable the transformation, if you are not going to empower um, you know, the 40-year-olds, the 30-year-olds, the 20-year-olds, if, if you are not going to begin to create a seat at the table for the 10-year-olds, retire. It's like, it is a, it is a horrible legacy um, because this is that generation's journey. And so when I think about, um, you know, why I want 10,000 developers I know that all of you know this, but the fossil fuel industry is more or less holding us hostage, particularly in the United States and Australia. And the implications of that are that we have to create such a, so many, 10,000 developers that it cannot be stopped. And so, this is a very short bumper video that we created uh, to help explain sort of the context of what LF Energy is. 
At the Linux Foundation, we've seen how open source shared technology can transform industries. Now it's time for energy and power. Imagine a future where energy is delivered and used more efficiently by leveraging information and communication technologies. A future based on smart electric grids. A future where we can accelerate the energy transition with clean power sources. LF Energy is a new Linux Foundation project that supports multi-vendor collaboration and open source shared technology innovation to help create the electricity and power systems of tomorrow. All because we believe in the future that we share. So Q4 and then Q1 of 2020, um, we have uh, a number of quite significant uh, codebot bases that are coming into the Linux Foundation. Um, one of them is going to be around crowd balancing. Uh, it's the ability to orchestrate electric mobility, uh, which are basically battery storage on wheels and are both loads and resources. Uh, another one is the open smart grid platform uh, which really enables um, the transformation of the substation into a, a, um, a data center um, that can facilitate and orchestrate um, devices and sensors and um, uh, resources that are at the edge. Um, there's a consent management system that's coming in from uh, Estonia. Uh, Estonia is the story that you never heard about. Um, because you all heard about the Ukraine, but the Estonians have been very successful in being able to keep Russia out, off of their grid. Um, and consent management, the ability to actually um, provide uh, user data that can, um, can, can help provide insights and enable new markets to be developed. Um, we're going to have a summit in Paris, uh, November 4th and 5th. Please join us. The place that I'm really hoping that we can lead from is this notion of 2050 together. Uh, the marketing folks were like initially saying, no, you can't talk about 2050. It's too far out. People can't make their goals. But I want us to remember the things that exist on this planet that could not have possibly happened if we did not create far off and ambitious goals. And this is the number. This is the place of no return. So what I want us all to start talking about is where are we now and what do we need to do next? Because like the Linux Foundation, we are creating the world's largest shared energy investment. So this is LF Energy. Um, please, if you have a question you want to talk, reach out to me. Um, totally interested to share whatever we're doing and to bring you into our community. Thank you very much.